Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to at another episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So in this video, we are going to see about how to protect your branches. It can be your main branch, it can be a developer branch, it can be any of your release branches. So the reason behind doing this is this will protect your branch from pushing. Like if someone want to push their changes or if someone wants to delete their changes or even for requiring any status checks before merging. So this actions that we are going to do now, uh, which you are going to see in this video today, will protect your branch. So in case if you are having your main branch in your production, like all the code are in production. So you do not want to keep it unprotected so that any changes would make an impact in your production code, right? So we all know that. So today in this video, we are going to see, so this is kind of an advanced, uh, topic in terms of your github uh, and uh, please do watch the entire video and uh, if you have any questions or any doubts please do comment in the comment section and please do give a thumbs up if you like this video and share the video with your friends and for those who are uh, getting trained into azure devops or into platform engineering or into github or whatever because nowadays everybody every one of us want to know the github because everything relies on the github or either into the azure devops but now in this video we will see how to protect the branch so let me tell you first, uh, before uh, we protect our branch, what will happen like before and after. So we're going to see that. So now we're going to see before, like what if you don't implement your protection or if you haven't protect your main branch, what will happen, right? So firstly, so this is my uh, GitHub repo and I'm going to connect it through my Visual Studio Code. So this is like a quite uh, an easy way to connect and for making any changes. So for that, I'm going to connect. So I'm clicking on connect to and I'm choosing open remote repository and then I'm going to choose my workflow repo. So now I have connected my workflow repo and this will take me to the files. So if you can see here, uh, the files are getting loaded and I have the workflow files and these are my files which I have currently in my main branch. So if you see here, I'm currently in my main branch and uh, the files are loading. Yep, so now it's been uh, updated. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to uh, update or I'm going to just add a test file randomly or I'm just going to make any changes. For example, in the cron job uh, file, if I'm just changing this time to 22 instead of 23, uh, which is like 10 o'clock. So now uh, the file has to be updated. So I'm, I'm adding the changes. So now the file, the, the changes has been staged now. And then I'm going to uh, give, commit, commit it to the remote repo. So I'm giving it like updated cron job time. And then I'm going to just do a commit and push. So this commit and push will send the files. So if, you, if I go to the actions, you can see the updated cron job time is running, which is the one, so the one that we have given. So it has started to build. And now if I come back to the code and if I open my cron job file, you can see here the one that we have changed so previously it was 23.54, like 11 o'clock 54 minute. But now it has been updated, right? So previously it is like 11.54, um, uh, now it is like 10.54. So uh, just imagine if someone else uh, in this scenario, okay, so we have made a, made this time change because we know what we are changing, but just imagine if someone else have made a code change and if that has been deployed to the production, just imagine what kind of impact it will give or like if, if it goes wrong, just imagine like the whole website or the whole application might go down or whatever it is like. Right? So we have to protect the branch now. So let's start the process. So for that, I'm going to go to the settings. So now this is the after part. So uh, this is the process part. So we are going to implement the protection to the branches. So I'm going to the settings and then I'll go to the branches. So here uh, we have uh, this option where we're going to do the protection rule for the branch. So I'm going to click on this add branch protection rule and I'm going to add the main branch. And one, once I've added it, I'll choose this require a pull request before merging because once I select this request, any change that comes to the main will we should have a pull request before it has been merged. Otherwise, we cannot merge it. So 
even if I make any changes, that will go via a pull request. So I, I'll just show you after uh, making all these changes. And then here under the require approvals, I have given the required number of approvals. So for now, I, I'm going to give just one. So if you want to add more security, you can add two levels or you can add three. But for now, I'm going to just have it as one. And then here I have the dismiss stale pull request approvals when new commits are pushed. Because once you select this, um, what happens is, so actually this feature, the dismiss stale pull request approvals when new commits are pushed. So what happens here is, what it what does it mean is, so when a pull request is reviewed and approved, the approval is considered valid only for the specific state of the pull request at that time. So for example, if new changes are introduced after the approval, the previously given approval may no longer be relevant because the code has changed. So it will not go with the previous approval. It has to get a new approval because the code has been changed, right? So when additional commits are pushed to the branch, which are associated with the pull request, it updates the pull request with new changes. And for example, so when this feature is enabled, any new commits which are pushed to the branch will automatically dismiss the previous approval. So you have to approve it every time whenever you send any make any changes so this means that the pull request must be reviewed and approved again to ensure that the new changes are also reviewed and accepted right so that's the reason we have to choose this so this will in fact save you from unwanted uh, approval like unwanted code that has been so for example if you have got approval for the previous uh, pull request and when you are making this code change after that and when you send it this new code change will wait for approval rather than it will not go and get merged. So that's that's in simple uh, terms. And then the next thing is require status checks to pass before merging. For now, I'm choosing this, but I'll explain you like how, how to do this. But uh, if you see here, uh, I've got the status checks that's required because I have added a check file. So that's the reason it's been selected. And then uh, I'm going to click create. So this will create the branch protection rule. So now I have the main branch that has been protected and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the environments so here we have we have to create a new environment so the environment is going to be main the same thing the branch name right so we are going to create the same name so anything that comes under the environment will be waiting for that particular role or will wait for that particular branch I mean like again this is something like again adding another second level of protection so when it comes to the required reviewers if you are in an organization, you can give a group name. That will contain multiple people. So anybody in the group can approve it. And you can add up to six more reviews, which is you can add up to six reviewers or you can add up to six groups. So for now, I have one person. So I will add him in my group uh, as a reviewer. And I can prevent self-review. So this will not allow me to approve my own uh, changes. So it will wait for someone else who will uh, review it and then he can approve it and after that uh, we have this other point here so which is deployment branches and tax so this will limit which branches and tax can deploy to this environment based on rules or naming patterns so I'm going to click choose this and protected branches only so which is we have already tagged main so that will be chosen now and then I'm going to save the protection rule. So this will save my protection rule. So if you see, the environment main has been updated. So, so so after this, you will not be able to make any changes. So let me take you through that. So previously we have, we saw the, before we implement the protection rule, what happens? And now we are going to see after, right? So what I'm going to do is, um, let me open one of the file. So for example, I'm just opening this main.tf. Uh, okay, let me go back to the original file which we previously changed. So let me open the cron job again. And uh, if I click on this edit this file, and if I change this to 23 again, and if I click on commit changes, so this will ask me uh, to create either a new branch for this commit or start a pull request, or there is another option, like just commit directly. But if you see here, it will not allow me, it will tell me that bypass rules and commit changes, which is basically not the one that should be accepted. So now as we saw, uh, let me again uh, reiterate it for you. So if I make the changes here, and if I click on commit changes again, we have got a, uh, an option, like either I have to create a new branch or I can <clears throat> commit directly to the main branch and I can even bypass the rule. So this is not again 
uh, this is something like we are again bypassing the rule so which is again it's not protected right so for that let's go to the settings again and go to the branches and uh, the edit so if you see here uh, there is an option where we check this one like do not allow bypassing the above settings so which is the above settings will apply to the administrators and the custom roles with the bypass branch protection permission so this will not allow us to bypass the above settings or like whatever we have uh, made so far like to, in, in terms of protecting the uh, branch right so let's go back to the workflows and then let me try it again so i'm going to the cron job and let me edit it back to 22 and if i click on commit changes so if you see here i do not have an option for the bypass it's just only one option which is creating a new branch for this commit and start a pull request. So I do not have any option. I just have only one option, which is I have to create a branch, right? So that in that way, by doing that, you cannot or you must need someone to approve it. So if I click on propose changes, so that will create a pull request. And if I go to the pull requests here, I can see the pull request. Okay, sorry, uh, let me go back here. And if I click on the compare and pull request, I get the pull request here. And then I have to choose a reviewer and have the reviewer here. So I'm choosing the reviewer. And then now I'm going to create a pull request. And then this will go back to the reviewer. And for example, if I'm going back to the, like I'm opening the uh, GitHub as a reviewer. So if I go back to the pull requests, and if I click on the, uh, I think this is the one I believe. Let me open the other screen. and uh, so what's the pull request name so it's pull 12 so let me choose this and i'll go back to the uh yeah it's a pull pull 12 so yeah it's a pull request number here so i'm going to click on this update cron job and then yeah so wasn't so myself has requested a review on this pull request i'm going to add my review and click on this review changes and if i have any comments i can comment it and they can submit the review if i do not have any comments or if i have if i do have to uh, make any changes, I can select the request changes and if I click on submit review, it will it'll go back uh, to the original one, uh, to the original uh, uh, one who has created, updated the code. So it'll go back to him and then he'll have to update the change. So for now, I'm going to just click on approve and click submit review. So once I click on submit review, and if you see uh, the changes has been approved and now I'm good to merge the pull request. So either the approver can do or else my, myself i can do it so i'm going back to this original one and if i click on merge pull request and confirm merge so this will do two things one is it will merge and then it will ask me whether i should delete the current branch so if i click on delete branch automatically the current branch will be deleted and the changes will be updated to the main branch so this is so simple but again you have to be very careful in doing all this you must not miss any of these settings and it's it's very uh uh and level had advanced way but everybody uh, who works in the github or anybody who is working in a devops or into platform engineering must know this so with that i come to an end and we will see some more interesting videos in our upcoming sessions so until then it's bye bye from us and your favorite little slaw youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share the video with your friends give a like give a thumbs up and consider joining our uh YouTube channel. So that's what, that'll help me to create quality content. So please give a join and help me to create more quality content like this. So until I meet you again, it's bye-bye from Mr. Janmugam and your favorite Tittles Law YouTube channel. Bye-bye.